Uh, last week, Zandile Kumalo denied slain soccer star Senzo Meiwa was shot and killed when he tried to defuse a scuffle between her and her then boyfriend, Longwe Twala. Her sister Kelly Kumalo's relationship with Meiwa also came under the spotlight, and Zandile Kumalo's cross examination continues today. We have a reporter, Mangoba Mkunu, who is uh, tracking the story for us. Mangoba, good morning to you, and thank you so much for joining us. My goodness, it's a, uh, uh, what is it, uh, third week, I think, since the new presiding judge took over. And uh, we've also heard from Zandile Kumalo refuting some of the um, claims made by the state. Your, your version of what we can anticipate today? Well, Cindy, we're expecting cross-examination uh, to continue today. Uh, where we left off last week was uh, the lawyers uh, representing accused number four uh, cross-examining uh, Zandi de Kumalo on what exactly happened on the 26th of October back in 2014 when Senzo Maiwa was uh, shot and killed uh, in that house uh, at the parental home of Zandi de Kumalo. Of course, she was one of the seven people that was inside the house when all of this unfolded. Uh, she came gave a version of events last week uh, testifying about a scuffle that had broken out in the house and how Senzo Meiwa was shot after three uh, gunshots went off in that house. She also gave a chilling detail of uh, Senzo Meiwa's final moments in the car when he was being transported uh, to hospital and how she had kept applying pressure on his wound to ensure that he doesn't bleed out and that uh, she had kept on talking to him uh, just to ensure that he was still a wake uh, by the time that they reached a hospital and how uh, they then heard that he had ultimately passed just moments after arriving in hospital. But I think crucial to what we're expecting in court is uh, the cross-examination, of course. And uh, last week, uh, Zandi Kumalo refuting some of the claims that were brought to her by some of the defense lawyers. And one of those questions was around a proposed fight that is said to have taken place at the house. Uh, the lawyers representing accused uh, three, uh, that is Charles Misi, uh, raising the fact that there is a witness who will come to court and testify to the effect that uh, there was a fight that broke out between Zandile Kumalo and her then boyfriend, Longe Twala, which then ended up with Senzo Meiwa being shot. But uh, she refused and uh, disputed those claims, uh, saying that at the time they had been in a happy relationship with Longwe Twala and in fact this is the reason why she had even invited him to come over at his house on that uh, Sunday evening as uh, she disputed knowing of any fight that had happened in the house and also I think one of the crucial questions came around the identification of the suspects that were in the house uh, during a, a evidence in chief Zalile Kumalo pointing uh, to some of the features of those suspects who were inside the house she said that uh, the first intruder who was carrying a firearm was short. He had uh, dreadlocks uh, that uh, were uh, shoulder length as well as uh, facial contours uh, and uh, he was light in complexion. Uh, she said that the second suspect was in fact dark. He was tall. He had a pointed beard and uh, actually pointed out to accuse two Bongani Danzi as one of those that was inside the house when this all unfolded but uh, there were some inconsistencies that the defense was uh, quick to point out between her testimony in court as well as uh, the statements that were deposed by Longwe Twala uh, in uh, the, the various uh, statements that she, uh, he had given to police where he had claimed that in fact accused number two uh, was light in complexion and this was in contrast to what Zandi Kumalo had told the court. There were questions raised about that but uh, she stuck to her guns uh, to say that uh, you know people cannot see uh, the same. So uh, her version is that this particular suspect was in fact dark in complexion but I think also pertinent we also heard and got a glimpse of uh, the relationship between Senzo Meiwa and Kelly Kumalo at the time uh, when SMSs that uh, uh, Kelly Kumalo had sent to Zandi Kumalo were read out in court this formed part of the police investigation and uh, where Kelly Kumalo had expressed to her sister her unhappiness about the relationship that she had with Senzo Meiwa in fact in one of the messages she had said that uh, she had wished that she had never met Senzo Meiwa 
and saying that, uh, you know, she was uh, frustrated, she was emotionally drained uh, by Senzo Meiwa at the fact that uh, he was lying to her. You'd know at the time, Cindy, that Senzo Meiwa had been married uh, to Mandisa Mkize. And this was uh, one of the issues that uh, Kelly Kumalo had an issue with, the fact that Senzo Meiwa could not choose between the two of them. This is what uh, the defense had asked about the nature of the relationship between the two, uh, 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 between Senzo Meiwa, in fact, and uh, Kelly Kumalo. And this is what Zandi had testified about, the fact that uh, even though, uh, you know, there were issues in their relationship, uh, they were still happily in, in love and that uh, they, uh, you know, wanted to continue with their relationship. But, uh, of course, we are expecting more questions. Uh, where we left off uh, was uh, the defense, uh, uh, in fact, asking uh, Zandi Kumalo on some of those inconsistencies in a statement as well as testimony in court. And that's certainly where we're expecting uh, accused force lawyers uh, to pick up uh, today as uh, they expected, of course, to continue with cross-examination. After that, we're expecting the lawyer representing accused number five, advocate Zandi Lemshololo, to also begin with the cross-examination as this case continues. It is it's, it's now in its second week here in this court. And of course, this is a new trial. And Zandi Kumalo being the first witness of this new trial that has uh, began afresh as uh, we, of course, try to find what really happened on the night that Senzo Meiwa was killed. Yes, and Mangoba, uh, the, 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 the inconsistencies that you referred to, um, one could almost also pick up a level of agitation um, from Zandile Kumalo, and it just could be because of the pressure she's facing in this case, and particularly being careful how she responds. But uh, there, there just seems to be a level where, um, for instance, where she was identifying the supposed intruder, saying that with the time lapse, he may have changed in appearance. If he was light-skinned at the time, but due to the elements, he may be darker now if the court were to place dreadlocks on him, she may be able to recall um, well, that would jug her memory a little bit. Do you also get that sense that um, she, she's just buckling under the pressure? Well, from what we've seen in court, I think uh, for most of the time she has been quite composed when uh, giving answers here in court. Of course, there were points where, uh, you know, emotions ran high with some of the questions uh, that were posed to her. More specifically, when we spoke, uh, you know, when she spoke of uh, the issue of the intruders and uh, those questions that were asked about the intruders, I think one of uh, the clips uh, that was played in court was uh, the interview that she had done with ENCA uh, last year where she had indicated on that interview that uh, she had had difficulty identifying uh, these uh, suspects and uh, she had made claims that at the time they had been wearing masks for most of the time, uh, which is why she had failed to identify them. There were questions asked as to, you know, how then can she identify them in court if uh, she could not identify them earlier on? And uh, she had then uh, you know, said that uh, this was during COVID and that uh, the reason why she had not uh, been able to identify them is because when they first appeared, appeared in court, in fact, they had been wearing masks at the time uh, during COVID. It had nothing to do with, uh, you know, the, 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 the identification uh, that she gave to the court in all of her statements. But I think she was quite composed uh, in many of uh, the many questions that were asked to her, uh, sticking to her guns as far as those uh, particular, you know, uh, suspects are concerned, the facial features and what she saw on that day. And really uh, saying that uh, she's quite certain that, uh, you know, one of those intruders, Bongadin uh, Tanzi, was in fact one of those that was inside the house. I think there were also moments where we saw, uh, you know, the judge also intervening in some of the line of questioning that was asked uh, where they had objected uh, to that line of questioning, uh, more especially when it came uh, to the issues uh, pertaining uh, to the suspects. But uh, we're expecting, of course, to hear more uh, from the court today and perhaps uh, have finality as far as her testimony is concerned when she does continue giving her uh, evidence here in court and uh, to be cross-examined, of course, by the defense lawyers uh, that are, uh, you know, insisting that they want to show that the five suspects in the dock are not at all responsible for what happened on that day. In fact, they're saying that they're going to prove to the court that there were no intruders that had come into the house. So we're expecting tough questions uh, to be posed at Zandile Kumalo as, of course, a cross-examination continues today.
Yeah, and I mean her credibility obviously being under the spotlight as well. There were some uh, or responses where she had deposed that she knew of two. Uh, alleged suspects or intruders in the house and the five people in front of her she doesn't know how the numbers add up even going further to say maybe the police can make sense of why there are more suspects than what she had seen uh, as being the uh, purported intruders indeed in fact uh, she did indicate that uh, out of the five uh, you know she only identified Mongadin Tansi as one of those that was inside the house in fact there were questions posed to her during cross-examination as to how uh, she can remember after so many years and uh, why she had failed uh, to pinpoint uh, Mongadin Tansi during uh, you know the statements that she had given to police I think one of the questions was around the fact that uh, you know she had failed to identify him even through an identity kit that was done back in 2014 uh, the report that had come from the warrant officer that had carried out this identity kit was that Zandile Kumalo had in fact not given any of the features as far as uh, suspect number two is concerned and I think her response to that was that uh, it's because some of the uh, other witnesses that had been called had already given details as far as this suspect is concerned so she is quite uh, you no know, adamant uh, that uh, Bongadin Tanzi was inside the house. Uh, she says that it would be quite difficult uh, to pinpoint the others uh, because of those factors that have listed. The fact that they might have, uh, you know, a different complexion and that they might have different hairstyles. But uh, she says, of course, that is, uh, you know, up to the police uh, to, appro to prove to the, por to the court uh, as far as the investigations are concerned as to how those other accused were involved in all of this. But what she is saying is that but at the time of uh, that incident, it was only two of those accused that came into the house. And out of those two accused, Bongalin Tanzi is in fact the second suspect that had come into the house. He was the one that was not carrying a gun, the one that had gone uh, to try and, uh, you know, rob Kelly Kumalo of her cell phone at that particular point. So we're expecting more questions, of course, to continue as cross-examination is expected to proceed this morning. Much appreciated indeed. Emangoba Mkono uh, reporting to us at the Senzo Meiwa murder trial, which continues uh, this morning as well, saying a cross examination to intensify for the uh, witness, Zandila Kumalo, who is on the stand at the moment. Of course, this has created much uh, media uh, attention as well. It's a case that's gone over eight or ten years now, uh, and uh, conclusion hopefully will be soon.